Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're returning and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel, I'm a reseller on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Macari. And today we have a different type of video. Um, today I'm actually going to show you the palette I bought from Boutique by the Box of J. Crew and Madewell Returns. And this, because it was a manifested palette, I did not feel like it would be very much fun or interesting to sit there and show you every single piece because it wasn't a mystery. But what I am going to do is show you my end-to-end -end process from unboxing it, opening it up, sorting it out, photographing, listing, and I want to show you how I ended up getting this entire palette listed, 198 pieces in less than two weeks. So if you want an inside look into my process, definitely stick around. So first, before we get into actually like unboxing and listing the palette, I want to talk about these boutique by the box palettes because um, there's been a lot of interest. I've had a lot of questions and I actually ordered this palette for the first time. I've never ordered like such a quantity before, at least not in a long, long time. So I want to talk a little bit about like how I decided to buy this, why I bought this one, why I picked the one that I did. I feel like if you're somebody that's interested in potentially purchasing one of these, that's going to be more valuable than just showing you what I got as well. So if you like reseller content though, certainly consider subscribing to my channel. I love sharing my reseller tips, what's working for me on this channel. I love sharing with you um, what comes in my mystery boxes. And I'm super excited to share with you this type of, of work with me video so you can actually get like an inside view of what my process is and how I can process things so quickly. Um, and hit that like button if you could. That definitely helps out the channel as well. This is a different type of video for me, so it would let me know that you like this kind of content too. And um, if you ordered one of these palettes before, please let me know in the comments how yours has done. Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested to hear they sell out pretty quick, so I know I'm not the only one that's ever purchased one. Boutique by the Box, I would say at least a year, has been selling J. Crew Madewell customer returns. And in the past, I've only purchased their smaller boxes. They, they would break it out into like 40 pieces of like tops and bottoms or denim or dresses and denim or outerwear and sweaters. And I'm pretty sure that at this point, I've purchased every single mystery variety of each box. So one of the reasons I decided to purchase this palette is because those boxes have done so well for me. As of lately, Boutique by the Box has been releasing new palettes every Monday. And, and all the palettes are one of a kind. They are manifested. You can go in and read. Uh, they have a spreadsheet attached to every listing of exactly what pieces are in there the quantities, the styles, the sizes, how much they retailed for, so that you can get an idea of what you're getting, right? It, it, it literally says in there what you're getting. So the difference between the palette and the mystery boxes, um, the mystery boxes are truly a mystery. You, you're not gonna know what you're getting other than you know you're purchasing 40 pieces of sweaters and outerwear versus the palette. Um, you can see what the mix is. So really it just comes down to what you like to sell. My palette was palette number 51. It was a one of a kind. And so first I wanna just talk about like what made me decide to buy this particular palette over the other palettes they had available. Um, number one, and this is gonna sound silly, but I was in the market to buy a palette. So I had been considering the palette um, for a couple weeks and I've been just kind of watching which ones show up and I'm like, okay, when I see one that I feel is right for me, then I will consider purchasing it. So I've seen palettes as little as maybe 160, 170 items. I've seen some as big as 400 items. And so part of that was a palette that had a reasonable quantity that I think I could process um, when it became available. So. The palette that I selected was 198 pieces. I did the math on it. No matter which palette you're looking at, it's $10.50 per piece. If you if you look at the price versus the number of items, they are all exactly the same. $10.50 per piece, free shipping no matter where you live in the United States. So that is the one thing that's the same across the board. Um, 
what what changes the price on them is the quantity, right? So I picked a palette that was 198 pieces and I picked that palette largely because I felt 198 pieces is manageable for me. I would have the bandwidth to process 198 pieces. Um, I had the budget to spend. It was $2,079 for my 198 pieces. Um, I felt like I had the storage space for that many pieces. There are other palettes that have less items that cost a little less. There are palettes that have many more items. I've seen them upwards of three or 400 items. They're priced accordingly. And of course, you just, you're getting more at a time. The other thing that helped me decide to buy this palette was what was inside. Um, I personally love selling denim. Denim is easy for me to store in my space. It's easy for me to list quickly. Um, I just, I enjoy listing denim. And so when I looked at this palette and I noticed, okay, A, it's got a, a quantity that's manageable to me. And when I did a, a like a breakout of, of types of items, there was lots of bottoms and lots of denim in this particular palette. Now, I decided that that was going to be right for me. And so really that was um, the two biggest factors in what helped me decide to buy this particular palette. All of the palettes have a mix. Um, I've noticed that some of them have a large um, t-shirts and tops and bottoms mix. Some have a larger outerwear and sweaters mix. Some have a larger dresses mix. Um, so it just really depends on, it, it, it is personal preference, depending on what you like to sell or what you have the bandwidth to sell, what you have the bandwidth to store, what does well for you in general, just historically. And so for me, it was bottoms, but that might not be for everybody. All of the palettes I saw had a, a large spectrum. Um, some of the palettes I noticed have bigger quantities of multiple items. Um, mine did not. There were some, but not a lot. So I liked that about this palette as well. Um, but ultimately, I just, I, I said, you know what? I got to just do it. If I'm going to try it, I'm going to try it. And because they're all one of a kind, Palette 51 might not be there in the next 15 minutes. So if I'm going to buy it, I need to just do it, right? I can't sit on this and, and stew on it too long. And that's that's another thing you're going to have to kind of take into account. They are all one of a kind. If you miss out on the palette you're looking at, someone else bought it, you're just going to have to re-research the next palette that comes available and see if that one is right for you. Um, it took me a few weeks, like I said. Um, I researched a few of the different ones. And I had passed on them, deciding they weren't right for me. And then I finally settled on, on this one that I purchased. Um, a few things that, that some people may choose to take into consideration that I did not take into consideration. Um, number one, the MSRP of the items. Which sounds kind of funny, right? But honestly, the higher MSRP items and the lower MSRP items are consistent in every box. There's going to be a range. Um, resale value does not always equal retail value. And quite frankly, the higher priced items, since these are customer returns, they are just as likely to have damages or be unsellable as the lower end items. So I can't necessarily make the decision based on, oh, okay, I see that there's like 10 really high end pieces in this one box. That's why I'm going to buy this box. If those 10 items can't carry the weight of the rest of the box, that's not super valuable, right? The other thing I didn't really look at that I feel like a lot of people would look at or maybe be tempted to look at, I guess, is sizes. Um, I have found just by selling the different mystery assortments that size doesn't really matter with this brand and smaller sizes don't necessarily sell worse or less or less quickly than the larger sizes. So of course, I noted it as I was looking through like, okay, what's petite, what's size 25, what's size 2 extra small. There are definitely my fair share in this box of smaller sizes, but it was not a deal breaker for me when I decided to buy this palette. You may want to look at what sizes you're getting. Again, like I said, that wasn't a huge thing for me. Uh, and the other thing to consider with these palettes, if you are going to buy one, um, these are customer returns. So they're not sorted and they could be anything and most items as far as i know they were returned most likely online maybe in store i guess i don't really know but 
the bottom line is they were inspected when they were returned and it was decided that they were not sellable enough to like restock and send on to the next person. So they were like sold off. That being said, there are some damages on this stuff. A lot of them have clear plastic tape, which you'll see where the, where the item is marked and the items are marked through on the tag to prevent store returns. That is sort of the unknown here. Um, you know, like I said, some of your most expensive pieces in the box might have flaws so big that you can't even list them. Um, but some of the flaws that I've seen with the other, like um, the smaller boxes include um, deodorant marks, or it could be something as small as there's a little pet hair on it. Um, makeup stains are pretty common. Loose threads are pretty common. Um, sometimes it's just too wrinkled. Sometimes it comes in inside out. Sometimes there's a little mark on the inside of something like a pair of jeans. Um, there have been times where I've gotten stuff that's really, really worn. Like somebody wore this every day for a year and then they decided to return it. Sometimes the tags are just missing. Sometimes the tags are just wrinkled. Like it really just depends on whatever reason they found that they couldn't. Sometimes the little spots that they mark are so insignificant that I either I can fix it in two seconds with a tied to go stick or once I take the tape off, like you can't even see it. And so sometimes it's like not even a problem, but it's unknown. It's, it's unknown with the mystery boxes. It's unknown with the manifest. They do put in the listing that the manifest is are unsorted and the condition is not guaranteed. However, I think, and I haven't verified this with Boutique by the Box or anything, but I really think that they get these pallets in. Some of them they sort out and they make into like the 40 piece mystery boxes and others they just sell as is. But the chance of getting damages versus not are the same because I don't really think they inspect either one. The other thing that made the pallet sort of lucrative to me was that I verified with them that they would ship it in smaller boxes. And I'll show you here what it looked like sitting on my porch. The word pallet is super scary, right? Like I live in a house. My office is in my house on the second floor. How am I going to get a pallet delivered to my house? This was just five boxes that were dropped off. It was very easy for me to bring them up one flight of stairs one at a time. It was very manageable in my opinion, and I know it's a pallet, but it's not really a pallet. Now, I can't speak for the big 300, 400 piece ones. Maybe those do come in an actual like truck, come on the truck, have to be loaded off. I don't know. If you're interested in a bigger box, you may want to reach out to customer support and see if they break it down or not. That I'm not sure. I documented my end-to-end -end process on this one. I started with the unboxing and then how I sort it out to prep it, how I inspect it, how I get it into my inventory, how I photograph everything and list everything, how I use my VA to help me get all this stuff listed. Um, at the end, I will show you the pieces that I pulled out that I was not able to list due to flaws. So hang on for the ride. This is gonna be kind of a long video, probably the longest video I've ever put out, but I really hope you enjoy seeing my process. I hope you can get some insight into how I have my systems in place to really, really work efficiently so that I can get this stuff listed very, very quickly and sell off of it as much as I can as quickly as possible. Hang in there, enjoy the ride, and uh, let's get right into it. All right, here we go. We've got 198 units of J. Crew Madewell from Boutique by the Box. It is up in my office. It's a total of five boxes. I know it's called a pallet, but it's really not so scary when it's just five boxes. So today we are going to unbox and get everything sorted and out of the plastic packaging and inspected and ready for further processing, inventorying, and photographing. All right, let the games begin. So forgive me here, the camera angle is not the best, but you can see what I'm doing here. My strategy really at this point is just to get everything out of the boxes and I I guess you could really sort it out one at a time, but I find that it's much more efficient to just open all five boxes at once and sort the items into piles. Um, right now, I'm really just loosely sorting on how I intend to photograph, which is part of my batch listing process, which you'll see a little bit later in the video. But right now, I'm making piles of bottoms, sweaters, button-down shirts, t-shirts and tank tops, There'll be another pile for outerwear. 
I will eventually, a little bit later, um, start kind of breaking these piles down into smaller piles. But for now, it's mostly just getting items with other similar items so that I can, once everything is out of the box, list everything more efficiently that it's grouped together. So this was a kind of a daunting task because and I know the, the camera isn't really showing you the desk, but almost every single one of these items is um, in plastic bags. So I'm having to take the items out of the plastic bags. And then the only other thing I'm really doing right now is if they're inside out or if buttons need to be buttoned, um, I am trying to like do that quickly, maybe zip up some zippers on the pants. But otherwise, I'm not like inspecting them at this point. I'm just getting them out of the boxes so that I can work on them uh, as, you know, inspecting and stuff will be another step in itself. I find that if I do one step completely, it makes it a lot easier than if I try to work on each individual item at a time. This is going to be a lot faster just to have it sorted out first. Here's the aftermath of my initial sort. I've got dresses and jumpsuits, bottoms, button-down shirts, sweaters and sweatshirts. I had to take a break and pack up some orders, so that's that. And then those are all t-shirts and tank tops. So... They're in right now pretty much manageable piles. I was really tempted when I was sorting through to like start peeling off the tape or looking at flaws or even trying to fix things. Um, but I had to stop myself and just say, okay, right now I'm just getting things into piles that are easily organized. Um, I may organize a few more of these. For example, the shirts and tank tops, but those will probably get separated into separate piles because my main goal really at the end of it all, I'm not really concerned with what's men's, women's, kids, any of that. What I am concerned with is what I can photograph on the table here, which is going to be like shorts, vests, tank tops, um, things like that, maybe some t-shirts. And then there'll be stuff that gets hung up, which is dresses, outerwear. Oh, there is a small pile of outerwear here. Dresses, outerwear, um, like sweaters, things like that will get taken, the photographs will get taken on the hanger and then the rest of it gets flat laid on the floor right here. So the ultimate goal is to get stuff into piles based on where it gets photographed so that I can start bulk photographing and editing. Now for right now, I am going to try to inventory everything. So I'm going to start picking up these piles and there's no really a good way to, to do this necessarily in batches, I kind of have to do it all at once, even though it is a lot and it's not necessarily what I would prefer. But I do need to inventory the stuff, sort it into the piles based on how I'm going to photograph it. And I also have to go through and find the flaws. So I'll sort out any items that are flawed that maybe need more than just a little spot cleaning. And, um, you know, I'll have to decide from there if anything that's flawed, if I want to try to fix it or just pull it out. Um, also, I need to check this stuff against the manifest to make sure that um, everything is here. I have the full 198 pieces, make sure nothing's missing. Um, that is important too. And I can't, I have to do that kind of all at once because the sooner I can notify Boutique by the Box if there is an issue, the better. Um, and then from there, I can start the photographing process. Um, I'm probably going to start with the bottoms just because. You notice there's a lot of bottoms here compared to the other categories. I am going to get to work to start inventorying, going through this stuff and figuring out, make sure I have everything and um, start pulling out the flaws and start fixing the flaws. So today I'm working on going through, checking each item for flaws and checking them against the manifest. Um, this is probably the most grueling of the process, the most tedious, at least for me. Um, simply because there's no really like quick and efficient way to do it. I think it's most beneficial to get everything inventoried and checked first rather than do each pile individually. That way, if something's missing, you know, if, if I have missing pieces or um, if things are not matching up to the manifest, I can let Boutique by the Box know sooner rather than later. I don't necessarily expect that. I mean, I'm sure there will be some flaws and things like that, but just in case, you just never know. I, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the case. But um, at the same time, I'm going through, and I, I would normally do this, is pull off the tape if anything is taped, if things are 
um, slightly stained or whatever, this is the point where I button up all the buttons, um, I take the tape off, I use my little tied stick just to get off any of the really minor flaws. And so like right now I'm doing the button downs. I already did the tank tops and t-shirts. That was going to be my least favorite. So I did that first. Um, but really at this point, what I'm going to do is separate things based on where they get photographed so I can start preparing myself to bulk process what's here. So this is all the button down shirts that I have and I will go through one by one, check them against the manifest. Um, they do have each one, pretty much everything that I've come across so far, at least with the tops, has been new with tag. If they are not new with tag, like if that tag is missing, all of the J. Crew and Madewell stuff have the style name on the tag down here too. So it's not as big of a deal. I mean, obviously things are worth more when they have the tag, generally speaking. Um, but I can still figure out and match it to the manifest even if the tag is missing. So right now I've got a couple different piles going on. What I'll do in this, I guess you can't see it, but there's empty space right here on the desk. I will pile everything that's going to get photographed on a hanger in this pile. Back here I've got another pile. These are the, t the tops I've already done, um, the tops and t-shirts. This is all stuff that um, will actually get take photos taken right here. I don't anticipate a lot of these to go in this pile, but I left it here just in case. And then behind me over here, I have a pile of stuff that has flaws. I marked it on the manifest as being flawed. So, so far I found like heavy marker stains basically has been the biggest thing. Uh, one thing did have a hole in it. Um, those are things that I potentially may not list. They didn't, Ha whatever it was that was wrong with it wasn't going to get fixed with this basically so once I go through everything I'll have to figure out exactly how many flawed pieces I have um, and then I can decide if I want to take the effort to fix it or depending on what it is is it going to be worth my time you know if it's just a t-shirt that's going to sell for 10 to 12 dollars do I want to spend 30 minutes stain treating it you know I'll have to like kind of figure all that stuff out I will say in general, and just so far, everything is pretty much like what I would expect it to be if I would have ordered a mystery box. I know that on the listing, it said, you know, this is raw, unsorted, we can't guarantee quality or whatever, but there is no, um, so far, no indication to me that these are of any lesser quality than the ones that they've sorted through. I, so far, am, am pretty satisfied in that regard, so... I'll take you along for the journey with me while I um, go through this set. I, I, I'm probably not going to record myself doing every single pile just because this is probably going to take the longest of everything. But I will show you just how I kind of go through and I um, check each item to the manifest and remove any stains. So I'm going to fast forward magic of time here and get to work. As of now, I have already inventoried all of the sweaters, t-shirts, tank tops, jackets, and button-down shirts. This is everything that is going to be um, listed on a hanger or hung up or taken photographs on a hanger. And this over here is all stuff, well, really just this pile here from here over. This is all stuff that will get photographed um, on the desk. This pile over here is all stuff that's too damaged, which considering all of this, my damaged pile is only this, I really can't complain so far. So this is everything so far. All I have left now is the flat lay stuff, which is basically all the bottoms. I think I'm going to save this for tomorrow since it's quite a lot of stuff. I only have probably another hour before the nanny's gone and the baby wakes up. So I really need to focus on getting everything packaged up from yesterday and this morning, things that have sold. So I will have to kind of put this on hold until tomorrow morning. But I am confident based on getting all of this done in just like a day and a half, um, or really it was like today, like three hours plus like three hours yesterday. So not even a whole day if you were talking working hours. I'm very confident that by tomorrow I can get this all done and I can move on to the next step, which would be photographing and then listing all right y'all it's still the same day 
Baby's about to get up from her nap and I have to be done for the day. But I got all 198 pieces inventoried and the accuracy level, 100%. The manifests matched up exactly. There were no mismatches, no missing pieces, which I did kind of expect, I'm going to be honest, because with a palette or things like that, there's usually some mismatch and, and, and this time there just wasn't. So I'm very impressed and uh, I am glad that I took the time to quality check that and look, but uh, I really didn't have to because it really all was there. So All right, it is time to start the actual listing process, photographing, drafting listings, posting, cross posting. So if you take nothing else from this entire experience, I want you to pay attention here because this is what helps me list 200, 300, 400 items a month on a part-time schedule, literally a part-time schedule. I've been logging my hours. I average about 20 to 24 hours a week of actual reselling. My nanny is here today, so I've got a good five hours at least to start banging this out. So um, I really want to show you my, when I say I work in bulk, this is what I mean. And I want to show you what that looks like so that I can get this stuff listed quickly. So up here, uh, and I explained this probably yesterday, but I've got everything up here is going to be listed on a hanger on the back of the door that I will remove the background of. Um, so that is all set up so that I can take these piles and I can I can take photos of 20, 30, 40, 50 items at once and then move on to the next step. Down here, this is all of the, the bottoms. The, the jeans, the pants, all of that is down there. So um, everything that goes flat lay. So again, 20, 30, 40, 50 at a time. What I'm going to do, because this is so much, I'm probably going to um, alternate what I do. For example, I'll do uh, a bunch of hangers and then I'll do a bunch of flat lays. And then I'll do a bunch on the desk, which is the third pile of like little stuff. Just because as things sell off, I can make room for them. For example, uh, my, my jeans rack, there's probably 20 available hangers on that rack right now. So if I do all the jeans at once, I'm going to run into a storage issue or I'm going to have to put jeans in these boxes now that I have this new inventory system. I'm going to have to put jeans in places that I wouldn't normally put jeans. So if I can do 20 or 25 at a time and then I move on to sweaters and I know I can fit so many sweaters on my sweaters rack um, and button downs short sleeves etc those go in these kind of boxes so I can sort of move stuff around based on where I have space that doesn't always work out but I think for a lot of this it will work out so that's going to be my um, my method and I am going to do them in batches be, uh, partially because number one photographing 198 items at once would be tedious um, and number two, also, I'm working with the VA that's going to help me complete my drafts on my listings so um, I can give her a batch to work on and then I can start the process over and then we can like keep it going um, in, a, in a in a nice like assembly line sort of form. So I am going to start today. Usually it's whatever I feel like. I love photographing jeans, so I'm probably going to start with a pile of jeans um, probably will go 30 45 minutes of photographs see how far I get um, then I'll sit down and I will um, measure upload the photos and start the drafts and then repeat the process as time goes on so I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like as I take the photos and how I take the photos and then I'll show you the listing process after that here we go it's my favorite time of the entire process which is the flat lays I don't know why I love doing flat lays so much. I think it's because I can just knock these out so quickly. And so usually flat lays are pants, jeans, skirts, anything that are bigger than will fit in the desk, um, but that look better on the floor versus on the hanger. And you can see I've got just a whole stack of bottoms and it's one after the other after the other. I lay it the same way. I take the same photos or if there's anything special, maybe like certain details, I might take a few more, but it's the same photos over and over and over. I'm totally in a groove right now. I've probably got some music on in the background 
and I just pull from the pile, take the photos, set them on the desk in the order I'm taking the photos and I move right on to the next one. So this process is actually super quick. I can photograph an entire pile. This is probably, you know, 35, 40 pair if I'm guessing during one of my baby's one hour nap times. And then I'm ready. Next time I have a few minutes to work, I am ready to go to start the next part of the process, which is the drafting and the measuring. That was roughly 45 minutes of photographing. Um, so here's what I've got done. Um, mostly, well, it was like two stacks of pants from down there. I think these here are still jeans, but pretty much all the jeans that I had in the first two stacks, plus a couple of skirts. So 45 minutes worth of work. And you'll notice that I kind of have, when I sorted, I intentionally kind of staggered, and it doesn't always work out perfect, but I staggered like colors. So you can see I've got like white and then black and then black and then blue. You'll see once I start listing that, you know, when it's all kind of the same or similar looking items, it all really starts to blend together. So that's just one way to sort of keep myself um, from accidentally putting the wrong photos or um, putting like too many photos or, or messing it up in that way by keeping it staggered. So I'm constantly having something different to look at versus the same thing over and over. It's not as bad with tops, but it with jeans, it's really helpful for me to do that. And also I've stacked them up in the order that I took the photos. So when I start the listing process, I will start with this one and work backwards until I get to the first one I photographed today. So 45 minutes, I would say that was probably 30 pairs of jeans. I guess we'll find out when I actually start listing, but that is the next step to start actually drafting these listings. All right, I am ready to start the drafting process. So I did the skirts already because there was just a couple of them, but I have the jeans here. I have uploaded all of the uh, photos to my desktop. I'm a little bit old school, I guess. I like to have the photos on my desktop. Uh, then I can work on the desktop list perfectly application. That is what works for me. Uh, a lot of people, I know some people start their listing in like Poshmark or eBay or even like the list perfectly um, website on your phone. You can take the pictures right through list perfectly and then you start the drafts that way. I like working on the desktop, so that's what I'm going to do. But uh, I'll show you exactly kind of step by step how I'm drafting these listings and how I'm deciding which ones my VA gets and which ones um, I'm going to do myself. So I am going to start the screen share. I'll put myself down here somewhere and uh, I will show you how I'm drafting these. I'll only do a few because it really is truly because I'm doing all of the same item at once here, it is a very redundant process. So there's really not a need to sit here and do the whole pile, but I'll show you a few of them, how I do these and um, what makes this so quick for me. So here is my list perfectly. And right now I don't have any drafts, but I'm going to start building some drafts for my VA. Um, what I do though first is, and I guess I have like a little home team advantage here. I've purchased so many of these J. Crew Madewell boxes from Boutique by the Box, like the smaller ones, that a lot of this stuff, it is possible I've sold these styles before. So I'm going to reuse draft listings if the item has already been in my catalog, and then any new listings I'll have my VA do for me. So um, every single Madewell J. Crew, as we said, there is an item number in the... Uh, uh, on the tag or on the inside tag if, if it's a new without tag piece. So I'm coming into my list perfectly and where it says search everything, I'm going to type in the number on the tag. And this is going to search the title, the description, everything. Okay, so NL746 doesn't come up. So I've never sold this particular style of jean before. Fantastic. This one's going to be for my VA. So I'm going to add listing. And the first thing I do is add the photos. This is the skirt I listed, so I can delete that. So I always delete the one I just did, and then I know that these photos are the next. So you'll notice when I go through this, and this is another thing, again, quality check-wise, just to make sure I don't get my photos confused. 
typically, almost always, the very last photo I take of the item is of the back pocket. So I know back pocket and the first photo is the front, the full length front. So no matter how many photos in between, back pocket to full length front, that's what goes in this listing. Okay, so I type in for my VA NL746 and I also give her measurements. I do measurements in every single listing. So this one has All right, so I've entered my um, measurements. And then also, too, I do, um, if there's like a specific color or, you know, sometimes the camera, like I can see the item in front of me and I can see it's one color, but I notice in the photos, like it might be pink and my VA might not realize it's pink and might think it's gray or, you know, how like lighting. So um, I don't really feel the need to tell her what color this is because it's blue, but I have the item number, the um, measurements, and then if I need to specify a condition, I'll put, you know, either NWT, NWOT, or EUC. Um, this one is obviously new with tag, so I don't usually put that, but she can see here that it's new with tag, and I make sure to include um, a copy of the tag that I can see here. So that's, that's it. She will go in. And what I have her do with these, because this J. Crew Madewell stuff, most of it is current. It's either currently on the website or recent seasons enough that if you type in this number in Google, it comes up. So what she actually does for me is she'll go in Google and she will search for this. She will find the exact name, the exact um, like style name and everything, and make it title for me, usually just basically copy and paste right from the website and just like exactly what they call it. Because if somebody is searching for that exact item, I want it to match what is listed on the website. So she'll type in that for me. She'll usually just grab the description right off the website too. And then she will fill in this stuff based on what she finds. Uh, she'll fill in women's new, new with tag. And then, um, I come down to keywords and in the UPC, I put where the item is located now that I have this new inventory system. I know I'm hanging this on rack number four, which is my jeans rack, which is, I'll show you, um, you'll see it or you probably have seen it. Basically the whole back wall is all jeans. I know for sure I'm going to put this on R4. So I am, um, I am going to put that in UPC. When I come down here to keywords and pricing, I put in here. Uh, in the SKU, I'm going to put R4 because I know um, that is where I'm going to hang these, that rack I have on the back of my wall. These are going to get hung there. So I'm going to say R4, um, that's my SKU. And then when it cross lists, and you'll see in a second, um, it'll just, it, it'll be noted in there that when this sells, I need to go get it out of R4. So my VA will fill in the MSRP here. And I did ask her to if like if it's a clearance item or whatever, if like whatever the current price is online. So maybe this, maybe these jeans were 148 regular price, but right now they're on sale uh, for $64. She'll put a 64 in here for me. And then um, she'll also put in the notes when it's complete. And then if anything else I might need to know, like she might tell me if it's sold out in this size, in this color, or, um, whatever, you know, things that might be useful to me in deciding how to price the item. So anyway, I mark this as draft and here's what it looks like right now uh, once I save and preview. So here's the pair of jeans I just put in there. And then also here are the three skirts that I already did. Those I put in box Y. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep on like this, um, basically through the whole stack. So doing it this way, I can probably draft or sometimes list the entire pile in maybe an hour. So the next one, we'll just go right on to the next one, NM236. 
I hope I have an example of one I already have sold before. Okay, so under so under my sold tab, I see there's a one. So I've totally sold this exact same style before. There it is. So instead of giving this one to my VA, I am just going to use this listing. This button right here in my list perfectly allows me to make a, a copy or duplicate this listing, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete all the photos that are in here already. And I am going to delete. So the first step when I open the files, I delete the four photos from the last listing. Yes. And now I know the next photos. Again, full front to back pocket are this next pair of jeans. So I'm just going to update. This is actually very, I love when this happens. So this is a sold listing. These are a size, the, the sold ones were a size 28. The ones I have in front of me are a size 28. So ordinarily, um, you know, unless I get lucky like this, I would go in and I would change the size and I would update the measurements. I'm not going to do that here because it's already in there. It's literally all already in there. I'm going to review my keywords. Um, in this one, I need, this must have sold before I started the inventory system. So I do need to put in uh, a location. And also I need to be very careful too when I do this, because if there was a, um, if there was a location in there for the sold item and it's not going to be the same, I need to make sure that I, um, I update it. Uh, that's another thing that could potentially go wrong with this inventory system, but it's working out so far as long as I'm diligent. So, um, the last time though, my VA looked at this, the, they were $118. They were on sale for $99.99 and I listed them for 70. Now I will say when I sold these before, they sold in like three days and they were a full price sale. So I'm actually going to up this to 80. Um, and I'm not going to mark this one as a draft because I'm not giving this one to my VA. So this one, when I save and preview, it's going to go under unlisted. So bam, that one is ready to be cross posted. And I did like nothing. So um, again, that's just my like home team advantage, I guess, because I've sold so many of these before. But it is just another advantage of like, find something that works for you and sell it over and over and over again. Um, you know, my strategy is liquidation mystery boxes. And it works out that way for me. I know thrifting, it doesn't usually work out like that. But just another way I'm able to like bang out listings and sell a lot because I list a lot. So I'm um, just throwing that out there. The next one is NM725. And the perfect vent, the perfect, the wow. Well, the petite perfect vintage jean. That's exactly what I have here. The petite perfect vintage jean. So again, I don't have to hand this one off to my VA. Now I do have to, um, I do have to measure these because the ones in the photos are a size 30 petite and the ones I have now are a size 26 petite. So again, I'm gonna delete pocket to full front. Those were the last ones I listed. And again, full front to pocket the new jeans. I'm going to change this to 26 petite, 26 petite, basically everywhere. I just have to kind of look at it and make sure. And then do my new measurements. So this one is a 14 inch waist, 10 inch rise, and 27 inch inseam. This one's also 27. Okay, perfect. So new, new with tag. My new um, SKU is R4. Okay, so last time they retailed 128. They were on sale for 109.50 and I listed them for 79. I'm going to keep them at 79 and I don't need this to be a draft. So bam, that one is listed. I'm really glad and I didn't do that on purpose, but these ex different scenarios in the example just based on um what i have in front of me that's really great so i'm happy about that here's another pair um, these are the perfect vintage wide leg jeans nm234 okay so these are brand new ones i've never listed before so 
I will draft this one for my VA. Again, deleting the last one I did and then back pocket to full front. I keep it very meticulous like that for the jeans because they everything starts to look the same when you're looking at a, a whole pile of photos. It's really not as necessary um, when you're doing um, when you're doing like tops and stuff because tops end up like looking different, if you will. Like you know, they they don't all look the same the way that bottoms tend to. And then I'm going to put this in R4 and draft for my VA. So that's the whole process right there. But again, when I just throw on some music or I throw on a show I want to watch, um, I I've got this down to a pretty good science where I could probably at least draft or duplicate all of these jeans um, within maybe an hour. So if we think about a mystery box of 40 items, I spend an hour photographing and an hour drafting listings and probably an hour inventorying the stuff and checking for flaws, right? So three hours, um, probably a fourth hour to list the stuff. I, I, really, I really do list things pretty fast. And I think anybody could, you just have to get yourself into a good groove and a good system. So I'm gonna work on the rest of these and I'll come back when it's time to do some hanger photos and I'll show you what that looks like too. All of the jeans from that batch are now drafted or listed or completed. And they are now on this rack. I did run out of hangers, so now there's literally no more room for jeans on this rack. I have these three. Uh, I did three too many, um, but what I'll do is just leave them right there. And then um, as I sell off jeans from this rack, I will just hang those up. Probably will only be maybe a day. Maybe by tomorrow morning they'll, they'll have a place. But now I'm not going to do any more jeans uh, or pants because eventually I want to put whatever else I get on this rack. So I'm gonna move on to sweaters because most sweaters go here and I have 17 available hangers. So I'm gonna do, I probably got 17 sweaters there. Uh, sweaters next, and actually I might start with tops. Tops are not the most valuable and I really wanted to do most valuable first, but I'm probably gonna do whatever's next off camera because um, I only probably have an hour maybe left to work today um the nanny's about to leave put the baby down and i'll be responsible for her when she wakes up from her nap and i now have to prioritize shipping out orders that came in since last night so um, i need to give myself time to do that if i have time i will try to batch photograph some shirts not super exciting so i'll do that off camera i do know that i have this box over here that has shirts in it there's a lot of room in here so I can get some more into this box, which is why I would start with shirts. On Friday, we'll go through another batch of hanger stuff and uh, we will go from there and kind of just check in and see where we're at. All right, it's 9 a.m. Wednesday. Our nanny's not here today, so I really am only going to get done what I can get done during nap time. Um, Probably only the first nap because the second nap, I'm probably going to take a nap. She was up very, very early this morning. And then we have swim lessons. I'm probably going to be tired this afternoon. So the goal for today is we're going to do some hanger um, photographs. This is mostly sweaters and outerwear. There's a few button ups left in there. My thought process is this stuff is going out of season. I want to list it first just so that, you know, if anybody is still looking for this stuff, I can maybe have a chance to sell it. It is March, so it's kind of a hard, uh, you know, hard sell. But you know what? I'm going to get all this stuff listed in the next couple days. I might as well go with this. I've got room 
on this rack here for some sweaters. So that's where we are going to get started. So yeah, please enjoy this view of me taking photos in my pajamas with my hair in a messy bun because that's what we're doing today. So on hanger day, it's basically the same deal. I start with a stack next to me and I take a photo of the front, the back, the inside tag, the fabric tag, anything other details that I need to take pictures of. I always start with the front, I always end with the back and get everything in between. Sorry for my camera angle. I am a reseller, not a video producer. Uh, so I know I'm a little bit cut off here, but you can kind of get the idea. I also use this time to do an extra quality check. Um, sometimes the flaws on these are so minor that I miss them on the first pass, but I might not see them again until I hang them up or I put them down on the floor. So you'll see me kind of picking off little stray hairs or using the Tide Stick every once in a while just to kind of get whatever uh, flaws I may have missed the first time around. I'll do a third quality check, of course, when I'm actually measuring and all that. So it's a, just a nice way to get, um, you know, extra eyes on it uh, or a, an extra time. So anyway, I'm just kind of working through the stack here one by one. And this is a mix of sweaters. Uh, this is the big jacket that was in there. It's basically whatever is, uh, whatever is, can be taken a picture of on a hanger is is the idea here and then when I'm actually drafting the listings I'll delegate it to the different places that will go um, but again because I'm doing the same motion over and over and over again it makes it very quick I can list or I can take photos of multiple items many many items in a very short period of time because I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again in in a batch here. So after that, it was about 30 minutes worth of photographing. I ended up with 91 photos, so approximately 25 to 30 items. Um, usually about three photos a piece. Some items I take more if I need to, so it's probably more like 25 items here. So same process as with the uh, flat lays. I'm just going to start listing these or start drafting these in my list perfectly so that I can either... Uh, mark them as unlisted to get posted or um, delegate them to my VA to draft the listing for me. All right, I am ready to start entering in the sweaters and it's really basically the exact same story as the flat lays. I am going to um, look up the item number just to make sure I've never listed this before. Mm, many of these I think are brand new to me, so I may not look up all of them, but um, and we just got back from swim lessons and I have a few minutes to show you this, but I look a hot mess, so I'm not putting the camera on. I think you will get the idea though. So I'm going to type N0074, which is the one I'm doing next. I have not sold this before, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a new listing. And then they're already in here. Oh, this is the last one I did. That puffer jacket, which by the way, unfortunately, so this was the most expensive item or the, retailed for the highest, I guess I should say, in the entire box. And unfortunately, here, let me show you real quick. Um, unfortunately, this one had a flaw, a pretty big flaw. There's this hole in the collar. It's like slit open. Um, so I decided just to list it and I will disclose. Um, but sometimes you know, especially with these um, returns and stuff, you can't rely on the MSR, the higher MSRP items because sometimes the most valuable items, according to the manifest, are damaged like this. So moderately disappointing in this one item, but I did just want to show you that. Um, this one is pretty significantly flawed uh, as compared to like ones that just have dust or makeup or whatever that I was able to easily remove. So there is that. Uh, anyway, back to listing the sweaters. So I did this one last, and this whole batch is going to be sweaters and sweatshirts. I guess technically this is a sweatshirt. So the, the other step, I guess, that's in addition to the flat lays when I do the hanger ones, because you can see like it's on my door. List Perfectly has photo room built in, so I'm just going to remove the backgrounds, not on this one, but on the other two. And uh, that'll work on, actually it's done already, but usually I just let it work while I am typing out the rest of it. So I'm just measuring right now. All 
right, and I know that this one is going on rack R2. R2. That's it. That one will draft for my VA. And I'm literally doing the same thing that I did with the flat lays. Um, this next one, I know I for sure have never listed one of these before. And then I delete these and move on to the next one. I, same as uh, with the pants, and this doesn't really, um, it, it's not as easy to do with like tops because tops are usually pretty like distinguishable. But I do always take a picture of the entire front as the first photo and the entire back as the last photo just so that I can, you know, make sure that I keep them separated and I don't accidentally mix up my photos. Um, I would say also too, I um, try to alternate colors. So I try not to, if possible, take a bunch of pictures of black tops uh, all in a row. I will stagger them as you'll probably see on here as well. So just to keep that in mind, um, just something that helps me go faster and uh, be more efficient. So those backgrounds are removed. I'm adding the measurements. Sorry if you hear my tape measure. And so on and so forth. So I don't know if I'm going to have an example for you of one that I've already done because the tops, most of these tops I have not done before. So but basically it's the same. I either put it in for my VA, um, mark it as draft, or I will um, or I will go in and uh, find it and just duplicate the listing, add the new measurements. So I am going to, because this is uh, pretty much the same thing over and over, I'm gonna go ahead and get this batch of sweaters listed and then I will alternate to another batch, probably the little stuff, the little t-shirts and tank tops that will sit on the desk. Hello and good morning. It is now Friday morning and uh, my nanny is coming today. So I've got a nice little chunk of time to do some photographing and drafting today. So I'm going to show you the last example of how I photograph this time with this pile of uh, it's mostly shirts and there's a couple skirts in there, I think. Um, but these items will sit nicely on my desk. And uh, that way I'm not killing my back trying to flat lay. I found that uh, with the skirts, of course, those normally would go on the floor. But some of these smaller type tops, um, they just don't look as nice on a hanger versus if I just set it on the ground. And uh, so a lot of the smaller tops I've been doing on the desk and then just removing the background. So I will show you that today. The goal is to get through this entire um, stack and then also to draft the entire stack as well. So let's get to it. I'm going to show you uh, the listing process with the little stuff. Here we go with the third and final scenario of uh, batch photography. So again, sorry about the camera angle, but you'll get the idea. Um, I literally just have my light set up and I put on a show to watch and I am just doing basically what I would do with the flat lays only because this stuff is smaller. I'm doing it right on the desk instead of on the floor and uh, I will just remove the background. Again, I'm doing a quality check up. That one did not pass. So um, that goes in the other pile, but over and over again, same thing, front of the item, back of the item, inside tag, and move on to the next, pretty much just alternating colors if and when I can to keep them separate. And because I don't have to bend down as much or move around as much, this one um, actually goes really, really super fast and I can do a lot of tops or small items on the desk very quickly here. So um, that's basically it over and over and over again with the same task to get through as many as possible in a very, very short amount of time. All right, we're all set. There's the whole stack. It took about 30 minutes on this one, and uh, I am going to take a little break, get yesterday's orders packed up so I can run to the post office. Since I have my nanny today, I'm going to do a quick workout, and then I should be back home in enough time to get all of these drafted before the baby is up from her nap. So that is the goal. 
Today is Saturday and it was one week ago today that I unboxed this palette and here is what's left. I've got this pile of pants and those up there are dresses and sweaters. So really just one more batch of flat lays and one more batch of hangers. Um, everything else is drafted or listed uh, and or listed. There's about um, last time I checked, probably 80 or so listings with my VA, but I've already actually posted and cross-posted um, many of, of what's already been uh, drafted. So the goal is by Friday to have all of this done, drafted, listed, uh, photographed, drafted, and hopefully listed because, who. All this stuff is coming in and uh, I got to get moving. So can I get an entire palette processed in two weeks on a part-time schedule? That is the question. Uh, so let me get to work today. I think we're going to do the flat lays. That's going to probably bang out the quickest. And then just one more day of photographing, which will be this stuff. I can see that my VA has been working through some of the listings I had in there for her. I currently have 67 drafts and I can tell that she has um, completed drafts when they have titles, usually when they have stock photos and she'll sometimes leave me notes in the notes section. So these down here I can tell are not done, but these up here I can tell have been completed. So. Usually as she goes through and completes the listings for me, it's then my job to go in and um, I'll take note of whatever she says. So in this case, she says sold out on the website in this color. I don't leave that in there just because it clogs up the listing um, once it is ready to go. But I'll go in. I see that she put the MSRP of $42. So that helps me to kind of determine how to price everything. She put the MSRP of 42 and I know it's sold out online in this color. Um, I'm going to say 25 on this one. And again, these are just ballparks. I can't expect miracles on a t-shirt, but um, anyway, so that's... Oh, and let me show you what I did there. Um, I just, once I put in the price... Once I put in the price, I come down and I, what I did was I mar unmarked it as draft. So now, if I refresh my list perfectly, this one has disappeared and it's over here in unlisted. So I know that once this is listed or once it's moved over here, it's ready for me to cross post. Okay, back to the drafts. Let's see what she says about this one. Okay, so this one should be good to go. Size six, everything's filled out here. New with tag. Okay, so this one I can see she put in the MSRP of 118, but the um, it was on sale or on clearance maybe for 49.99, but it is sold out in this color. So I can delete her notes and I'm gonna put this one at, let's say $40. Again, my goal here, and if you, you know, you may price these differently, my goal is to double my money in 90 days. So I don't necessarily, um, price things super high, I price them to move and still make a profit. So keeping in mind that um, this was on clearance for $49.99, that's why I priced it at $40. So I'll keep going. It looks like these two tops are the same exact top in different sizes. So this was on clearance for $49.99. Again, I'll put it at $40 because it is sold out in this color and I'll move it out of drafts. And every time that I see that she's got some drafts completed, I will go in and do this so that I have new items to list throughout the day or throughout the week. Not every single day does she work on these for me. And, you know, she's pretty good at communicating with me. Hey, I'll be able to work on them today. Or, hey, I have other stuff going on and I won't be able to work on them today. So it kind of just depends on, on what's happening. So anyway, once I have a good... Um, list here of unlisted that's when I start to cross post to multiple different platforms so in this case right now because there's only four I'm gonna select all four I'm going to do Poshmark first I typically do Poshmark first um, but it really just depends I, I try to rotate where I list because um, I want to keep feeding the algorithm on all the platforms so 
I know I haven't listed anything new on Poshmark um, at least in two days. So I will start with Poshmark. Wasn't sure really what to call this, but we'll go with that. It's not really a sweater. Okay, and then this is a dress. And so this is this is how List Perfectly kind of works as far as cross posting. Um, whoops. Basically, it'll open a tab across the top for each listing. So I choose to list in bulk, and what I do is I do like a whole round on one platform, and then once those are all listed. I will do a round on another platform. Now these are not gonna show up as unlisted when I refresh. They're no longer unlisted because they're listed on at least one platform. So what I have to do is go into all and I can see that they're right here. And what I'll usually do is I will filter now from here. I'll do Mercari next. I can filter to everything that's not on Mercari. I don't actually have a lot. There are a few though. Um, and what I try to do, if, if I have a lot, I would do like five on Poshmark and then five on eBay and then five on Mercari, but like five different items so that I'm not posting, I'm not dumping the same item on all three platforms at the same time. Um, that helps me reduce the chance of a double sale, especially, you know, you never know if you have something that is um, highly sought after or that you know, might sell quickly on more than one platform. That has happened to me. If I dump everything on one platform all at once, then it, you know, might double sell quickly or whatever. And I, you know, just to avoid that, I do try to stagger it a little bit. Fortunately, right now I'm pretty caught up on cross posting. So um, I don't have a lot to cross post, but sometimes I will kind of stagger it. But anyway, let's go ahead and cross post to Mercari. So I've selected the ones I want to cross post and I just press this little arrow. I pick Mercari and I will do Mercari also. And then after I list on Mercari, I will list on eBay. Once this round of drafts, here, let me go back and show you. It's just taking a second to open all the tabs at the top and then I know I can work those listings. Okay, so once I'm done with this round of drafts, there's not too many left in there. Um, that's the end of the palette. So once all this stuff is cross-posted, I will officially consider myself done. At this point, I am just kind of waiting for my VA to finish up. Um, I've already kind of started working on other things, if I'm being honest, but um, we will call the palette officially done when these are all cross posted and I will report back to you once I have it all done to let you know exactly how much time it took me start to finish. All right, friends, I'm done. I'm officially done. Um, it is 13 days in. It's Friday. So I started the palette on Saturday and then this is one day before two weeks. So 13 days. In 13 days, I was able to process list, photograph, sort through, not in that order, but you get the idea. 198 items, everything is for sale. And since I was kind of listing things as I went along, um, stuff has already started to sell. So that's the official time here. 13 days on a part-time schedule. That's including um, nanny days for me, not nanny days for me. That's including one full day I took to record YouTube videos. That's including... Um, all of the shipping I do, I have to pack and ship orders daily. So definitely on a part-time schedule, 13 days on a part-time schedule, 198 pieces. Did y'all think I could do it that quick? I didn't even think I could do it that quick. I am quite proud of myself right now, but, uh, I wanted to give you the update. We are officially done. Now that everything is photographed and listed, I am left with this pile of items 
that are flawed. So I wanted to show you what's left over. Um, these are items that either right away I noticed had like, you know, significant flaws or things that I maybe tried to um, clean with a tied to go stick and it didn't come out. So I'm going to start making some decisions about what to do with these. I will either decide, do I just donate it or toss it? Is it worth trying to clean further? Is it worth maybe tossing in the wash and selling it as um, used, pre-owned? So I'm going to kind of see what I can do with this. Um, so so let me let me show you what is still here. So unfortunately, this dress, um, when I was photographing it, and I love the whole process of, of the sort and then the photograph and then the list because it's like I get a triple quality check. So when I was photographing, I noticed that there's a spot on the back of the sleeve on this one. And I did try to take a tied to go stick and it did not come out, whatever this is. So that's sad. This is a size 14 and it's 128 MSRP. So this would have been a, a pretty significant piece to list. Um, I am going to make a separate video trying to do some other cleaning techniques. I'm not going to do it with this one because uh, A, I, I would love to do another work with me video and this one's probably already long enough by now. Um, but also I have some stuff from other boxes that's literally just sitting here and I can do a whole batch of try to clean this stuff up at once. So I'll do that. Um, this one I found as photographing as well. Um, can you even see this? I don't know. On the collar, so this is like a funnel neck and the whole inside of the front collar has makeup. Um, so the makeup is, it's all right here. And it's, it's kind of faint, but definitely noticeable that I wouldn't want to sell it like this. And because it covers such a large surface and because this is like a light color shirt, I didn't really want to try a tied to go stick. So this one, um, I might try the other cleaner and then I might actually just try to wash this and worst comes to worst. It's a size XXL, which is a bit big for me, but it would be nice for around the house. So if I can't save this one, I would probably just keep it for myself. Um, this one, this is a t-shirt. There's some markings on the bottom. I did try to take a tied to go stick to this. Um, it did not come out. Probably this one because it's a t-shirt. I'm not going to spend too much time on. I'm going to throw this in the wash. I'll take the tag off. I'll throw it in the wash. And then when it comes out, I'll put it in my thread up box. I'm not going to try to waste my time selling it as pre-owned. You know, it's a, it's a t-shirt. This one... I would like to try to save this one, but unfortunately this one has um, some makeup staining on the collar. I did try to take a tied to go stick to this one, and actually now I don't even see it, but it was there. It was, it was pretty prominent when I was taking the photos. Yeah, I see it a little bit here. So I'm gonna see if I can use a different cleaner on this one. Um, I did not notice this one until the photographing process either, so I'm glad I get that triple check. This is uh, Crew Cuts. I can't believe I didn't notice this while listing. I'm sure you can see it now that I'm showing you. Um, I didn't notice it while I was uh, sorting. So this one has a big stain on the front. And then also there's a hole down here. So this is, this is clearly a used item. And um, this is probably just going to get donated because I can't save that. This one... This one's pretty bad, but it's not obvious until you look closely. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So this has some color transfer on the stripes there. Um, it's like right in here. I am going to try to wash this one. This one is clearly used as well. I wasn't going to be able to sell this as new anyway, but I'm going to wash it. Um, and then that will also probably end up in the thread up box. This has a very strange problem. So there was tape on it where the flaw is, which that's the flaw they were talking about, but also the tape caused a fading mark back here. So this one is a, I think this is a men's medium. 
I'm probably just going to keep this for myself. Um, I have a one-year-old baby. She's about to be one year old as the filming this in a couple of weeks. And so it's nice to have around the house clothes that I can play with her in that I don't have to worry about ruining my own stuff. So something like that, especially because it's nice and warm and it is new. It's just got a little spot on it that I, as long as it fits okay, I'll keep that for myself. If not, I'll just donate it. This one, this one has a huge spot on the front. Um, I noticed that when sorting. I, I'm probably going to run that through the wash and then put it in the thread up box. This one has a huge spot. This is a pretty pricey sweater, I think. So this one's probably going to be worth trying to save with another cleaner. So I'm going to put this in my try again pile. This, what was going on with this one? Oh, ink marks in the armpit because it's just a t-shirt. Oh, and back here, it bled through when they marked the tag. So that one, I'm probably not going to try any further to save. That one I'll probably just donate, honestly. This, this has a spot on the front. It's not super bad, but because it's a light color, you can totally see it. Um, this did not come out with uh, the Tide Stick, so I'm just going to wash that. Um, this is just a t-shirt that had some significant bleed through when marked, so that'll just get donated probably. This one, tank top. I don't know, the tape is back here. But the clear issue is up here with the marker. So that'll just get donated. This one is a men's top. Maybe there wasn't a significant flaw on this one other than the fact that it's a men's t-shirt and it's got a lot of wash wear. Um, I can't list that as new. So I will probably just donate that one. This one has marker on the collar. Otherwise, it looked okay to me, but I don't know. I might try to get the marker out. What? Okay, guys, I just pulled the tape off, and the marker was on the tape. So actually, I might have just saved this one already. There's more tape here, but it didn't really bleed through. All right, well, we might have just saved this one, so that's great. I'll put this in the next batch to be photographed. Cool. And then the last thing here, this is a turtleneck t-shirt. Oh, this one has marker. Not that this is super valuable, but I do want to see, um, the Boutique by the Box listing recommends a product called Amadex to remove marker and makeup. I bought some. I've, I haven't tried it yet. So um, not that I would usually try to save something like this, but I am going to try to save this one just for the sake of seeing if that product works. So let me let me see how many were here total. So there's 14 pieces. Well, technically 13, I guess, because this purple shirt I think is fine. 13 pieces that most likely will not get listed. Maybe that green dress, um, I'm going to look up comps on that specific dress. And if it seems like I could at least get $20 to $30 for it with the flaw, I might list that one and disclose. But everything else, I'm probably just going to consider as a loss, which 13 items, though, is not really bad out of 198 customer returns. I think that's still really good. But in all fairness, I wanted to share with you what ended up coming out of this as not listable. So there is that. That's it. I really hope you learned so much from this video. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you are still here. Um, that is probably the longest video I've ever put out. And um, I'm so glad I was able to share with you some of my process. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you like videos like this? Um, 
I've never done anything like it. So I'm, I'm hoping you do, but I would really, really love your honest feedback. I'm going to come back in 90 days and do a 90 day update on this one. That'll be an interesting video too. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that video. And also um, make sure you subscribe if you like reseller content. I've got more unboxings coming. I always have unboxings. I always do, um, I always do 90 day updates on those boxes. I do a monthly what sold video and um, I'm really, really trying to work in some of these work with me and some other strategy type videos. So I would love to see you again in the future. Again, hit that like button, especially if you're still here. In fact, if you're still here, drop me a heart emoji in the comments. Let me know you made it all the way through. I'd love to see how many people actually made it all the way through. That is it for today though, friends. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,